I have been in a series of messages called Give Peace a Chance. We've been learning about relationships and how important it is for us to have strong relationships if we're going to have peace in this world. Peace comes from peaceful relationships. As we look around at what's happening today, we know that in our political arena, we don't see much peace. We see a lot of conflict. In our families, the same thing is true. In our businesses, it's happening. In our neighborhoods, we're finding people having a hard time getting along with each other. Wouldn't it just be nice if we were all nice? Wouldn't that be great? If we were all kind to each other and treated each other with respect. Unfortunately, there are times in life where we don't have peace because we have issues. It might be ours, it might be the other person, but we have issues. What we know is it's important for us to look at ourselves. I want, you to add, I want to ask you a question today. I asked this question the very first message in this series, and here it is. It's really heavy. Would I want to have a relationship with me? How's that? Would I want to have a relationship with me? I mean, just be really honest and serious about it. If you were out there and you knew you, would you want to be connected in this way? It's important for us, again, to think of it because we know we can only control ourselves. And as we see the areas of our lives where we say, I don't know that I could, I'd really want to have that relationship because of that. When we see those, we can do things to overcome those and to be better. For us to have peace, we need to lead people to also have a change of behavior. And when we're doing what's right, we can influence them to go in the right direction. I want to talk to you about that again today. And the way we've been doing it is we've learned that all relationships go through a cycle. They go from a healthy relationship to an unhealthy relationship back to a healthy relationship. At least we hope they go back to a healthy relationship because we know some relationships get stuck in the unhealthy phase. What I want to do is just share with you again a little bit of information about a few of these. First of all, a healthy relationship, what it looks like is this. We show godly love. And there's some words that help describe that, that we're sacrificial, that we invest in other people, that we protect other people. When we're doing that for each other, we are in a peaceful, healthy relationship. The problem is we become confused and we are tempted not to do that. Instead of sacrificing and investing and protecting someone else, we start, about, we start thinking about sacrificing and investing and protecting ourselves instead of other people. Healthy is doing it for them. We begin thinking, it, thinking about it, doing, uh, doing that for ourselves. And when we do this, that's when conflict comes about. It leads us to our bad behavior. That's the third part part on that cycle is that misdirected passion when we actually do something wrong. We sin, we fail, and that failure causes the relationship to fall apart. Now there's a result of that, and it's this, that we begin having problems. It's problematic passion. Part of those problems are these, that we, there are consequences to what we do. We do something wrong and we go through something painful, things that we don't want to go through because of what we did wrong. And God uses that to wake us up, to help us see that we need to change our behavior. We talked about that last week. But there's a second thing that happens. The problem is this, that we lose trust, that people don't trust us anymore. I don't know about you, but it doesn't feel good when people don't trust me. We all want to be trusted. But because of our behavior, it causes this to go away. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to share with you how it is that we can find that again. We've learned this, that we have a spiritual heart, and there are two sides of that spiritual heart. There's one part of it that is a selfless heart that we love other people and we sacrifice, invest, and protect them. And then there is the selfish part of our heart, and it's where we want to sacrifice, invest, and protect ourselves. What we've called these hearts are the but you heart. In other words, I'm concerned about you or the but me heart probably wondering where in the world did you get that from? And we learned this from a scripture that's found in the Psalms. It's really amazing to me. There was a guy named Asaph. Asaph was a leader of one of the choirs that sang in the temple. And Asaph wrote this Psalm. So it'd be like Cain 
sitting down and writing a song for the worship team to play, and the name of this worship song would be, But You. Now, I didn't say that in the scripture, but that would be a great, great name for it. Listen to what the scripture said. Who, it's not on your sheet, just listen. Who have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Why? We want God because God is trustworthy. If God asked the question, would anybody want to have a relationship with me? The answer is absolutely, because he is completely trustworthy for us, and we look to him and desire to have that relationship with him. When this happens, we see him, and we see people like this, as rocks, people who are great strength for us. The Bible even talks about this. We find this in another psalm, in Psalm 62. It says, Find rest, O my soul, and God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on Him. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Why is He? Why is He that? Look at verse 8. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Why do we trust him? Because he does the right things all the time. That's why. He said this, I'll trust him in all things. In other words, we do it all the time. Again, we look at ourselves and say, can people trust me all the time? Well, we want to answer that question. And we do that by understanding God's love and how God feels about us. Not only do we look at him and say, yes, I'll trust in him because he does, he does what's right all the time, but there's another reason why we trust him. This is good. It's because he loves us even though we don't deserve his love. His love is unconditional. You may have heard that before. He loves us even though we don't deserve his love. And that's why we trust in him. We all know that we fail. One of the scriptures that talks about that is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Transgressions and sins means this. You didn't live up to the expectations of loving other people before yourself. You didn't do that and you failed. All of us have done this. There's another scripture that talks about this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, it's a gift of love. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does that mean? Even though we've done wrong, God wants us to live. God wants us to come alive. God wants us to overcome those failures in our lives. Aren't you glad that God forgives? He's a God of forgiveness. Well, for us to learn this, we're learning about trust, let me give you a description of that, a definition of the word trust, because we're going to use this definition as the foundation of what we're going to learn today. There are three points that I want to share with you, and as we go through this, I want you to notice that there are a lot of questions that you're going to be asked during this message. The reason why we're having the questions is because we need to make this personal, And when we make it personal, we get to answer that question better. Would I want to have a relationship with me? Let's look at the word trust. Trust means reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, and confidence of a person. We're going to be using three of those words in that definition to learn what we're going to learn today. Reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, and confidence of a person or thing. That's what trust is is. Well, when we don't trust, what do we know? We have problems. And I want to share three problems that we have. Number one on your outline sheet says this, we lose integrity. That word was used in the definition that I just shared with you. We lose our integrity. Why do we lose our integrity? Because we are people that can't be trusted. That's why we lose integrity. Who can you trust? I mean, just think about people that you know. When I look to Jennifer, she's my wife. If you're not normally a person who connects with us at Woodland, Jennifer Jennifer is my wife. And I hope that she trusts me. But I can be honest with you and say that she hasn't trusted me in all situations. First of all, when I'm on a boat and I drive, she doesn't trust me. She always thinks she's going to die. 
Another example of that is this. We were at a baseball game watching the Rays. And you're always wanting to catch a, you know, you're wanting to catch a foul ball because you get a ball that was hit out there. You know, it's really a cool thing. And I would love to get a foul ball. Well, during this game, there was a foul ball, but it didn't go like this. It came like this, like a rocket right toward us. Jennifer and I were sitting there, and it was going straight at her. So what did I do? I sat there, and I drank my drink and ate my peanuts. That's what I did, right? I noticed it was coming, and I just kind of froze when I saw it. Let me tell you who Jennifer trusts, the dude sitting next to us, because he jumped out in front and protected her by hitting the ball so it didn't hurt hit her. And I felt like garbage. I mean, I just like, I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I didn't protect her. And the entire game, I kept thinking about what I had just done. Y'all, I felt terrible about it. Of course, you know, when you go through things like this, you just freeze. I'm just trying to make an excuse for what I did, all right? There's no excuse for what I did. Who would you trust to protect you in that way? It's a part of our integrity. It is. Look at the word integrity. It's this. We adhere to moral principles. The solution, excuse me, the soundness of moral character. It's honesty. So there are moral principles, there's moral character, and there's honesty. The morals in our world today are decreasing. I think most people would agree with that. There was a study that was done that looked at people's opinion or asked people's opinion about whether they felt like we were becoming a more moral nation or not. What they did was look at our values because morality and values go together. And they, they looked to places like the government. Uh, they looked to families. They looked to leadership and businesses and all those different areas where we should be listening or or learning these moral things where we can live the right type of life. This is what they learned. First of all, that 69% said that American values had declined since the 1970s, and that's the time period that they used. Only 17% said they felt like our morality was better. 63% believed that our moral decline came from political corruption. There were 61% who believed that we put too much focus on money and material things, which cause us to be selfish and do immoral things. There were 61% who said that our family values are declining, we're not, where we're not protecting each other the right way. 53% said there's a lack of strong leaders and role models in places that we need to find them. But listen to what else that study found. They found all of these people Couldn't find morality in that, but this is what they discovered, that 70% of them believed that they could handle anything that came their way if they just worked hard enough. They trusted themselves. Instead of trusting other people, why would they trust them? They can't find people to trust in many cases, but they looked at themselves and trusted what they were able to do as they Again, face these challenges that come our way. Y'all, we can't deal with all of the challenges that come our way. We need to be able to trust in someone. Obviously, we can trust in God, but we need others in our lives that we can look to. It's what integrity is all about. So I, I mentioned to you that we're gonna, I want you, I want you to answer some questions and they're personal questions. The first one is this. We just learned about morality in the description of integrity. Here's the question. Am I moral? Am I moral? The way to learn that is what is moral? Moral means this. It's concerned with the principles or rules of right conduct or the distinction between right and wrong. It's expectations again. Here's the expectation for us to do what is right. To do what is right is to sacrifice and invest and protect other people. To do what is right is to treat other people the way we want to be treated. That's what Jesus said about how we're supposed to live our lives. If we don't do that, then we become immoral people. Can people trust you in your morality? Here's a second question in, in, that relates to this. Do I have good character? Again, it's a part of the definition of what we just learned in integrity. Do I have good character? You may have heard this before. That character is who we are when no one's looking. Here is a question. It's not on your outline sheet. Is there something going on in our lives that we're doing that we don't want anybody else to see? God wanted us to know something about this. 
In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, it says, The man of integrity, it's the word integrity, the man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. We just talked about it. This is good news. If we don't do anything wrong, we have nothing to worry about for people finding us out. We become trustworthy. But if we're not, we're taking a crooked path. Again, it causes issues. Here's a third part of this. Am I honest? What are the questions? Am I moral? Do I have good character? Am I honest? What is honesty? We need descriptions of these things. It's honorable in intention and action, showing uprightness and fairness. When I think about the word honest, I usually think about whether I'm telling the truth or not. And actually, that's really what it's about. It's about whether we're telling the truth or not. But we can do it in different ways. Sometimes we just outright lie to protect ourselves, whatever it is, to get out of something. But there are other times we don't tell the truth because we want to manipulate other people to get something that we want. I've shared with you many times my struggle with uh, being bipolar, and part of that is that I like to buy things, and it's not a cool thing, and drugs are helping me with that. But before I got on all of this, I would, you know, I love to buy cars. I just love to, y'all, cars are cool. I love to buy cars. I would go to Jennifer and say, Jennifer, we need this car because if we had this car, man, it would be great for our family. We could do this. We need another car. We need this. this. And I would, I would do everything I could to manipulate her into giving me, getting me a car. It had nothing to do with my family. Zero to do with my family. It had everything to do with what I wanted. Well, eventually, I was found out. Okay, she, she came to understand after this had happened so many times, this isn't about the family, this is about you, and you've got a problem in this. It's about manipulation. That's not honest. We need to be honest about why it is that we do what we do, what it is that we want other people to do. It's not about manipulation, it's about investment. Okay, let's look at uh, the scripture, it says this. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my, what's the word? Integrity. My integrity, O Most High. That's how God is going to judge us. Number two on our sheet says this, that we lose strength. Again, I mentioned to you at the very beginning that the definition of trust, the description of trust would be the key points that we'll be learning. The definition of trust was reliance on the integrity. We just learned about that. Strength is the next word. Strength. Am I someone who's strong? We remember the other scripture that we learned or read earlier about God being the rock upon which we can stand. There are many scriptures in the Bible about God being our strength. And I want to use some of those scriptures again to ask us, ask us some questions and to teach us some things that we really need to know. Look at your sheet. Here's the next question. Can people rely on me? Can they rely on me? We love him because we can rely on him. Who is it in your life that can rely on you? I was sharing about, I talk about Maggie probably too much, but uh, Maggie is our dog. She's, she's either an angel or Satan. It just seems like there's no in between. I mean, she's one of those two things. And Maggie... It, it, she's learned what it is actually to rely on people, and she relies on us. We love to take her to the dog park. She runs around, runs around, runs, runs around. There are a lot of bigger dogs that are in there, and sometimes she can play with them and be cool with it, but other times they come around her, she gets scared, and she makes a beeline straight to us. And the reason why she would come to us is because she relies on us. She relies on us to protect her because she's in danger. Now, the problem with that for me and Jennifer is when she runs to us, all the big dogs run at us too, and it freaks us out, okay? It's just a really scary experience. But that's how she is. She relies on us. Again, we can look at it in that way. If people are in trouble, if they have these issues going on in their life, are they running to us? Can people rely on us? Strength is this. Strength is mental, moral, and uh, courageous power. Again, we're describing some of these terms. Strength is mental, moral, and courageous power. 
I want to use that to ask you some more questions. Again, it's all about questions. Would I want to have a relationship with me? And by answering these questions, we'll find out. Look at what it says. Can they rely on my mental strength? We're learning about reliance. Can they rely on my mental strength? That's another statement. Do I think through things well? When people come to me and they have a question or they need something, can they trust me to think very clearly through everything that has anything to do with what's going on before I make a decision? The people who are not reliable are the people that you go and ask and they just make a quick assumption or give you a quick answer without thinking through what it is that you're asking them. Y'all, you can't have trust in people like that. Do you think through what's been asked of you? Here is a second question. Can they rely on my moral strength? We've been talking about morality uh, already, but here's the statement next to it. Do I do what is right for others and the relationship? We often look at this and we see, I need to do what's right to the other person out of my but you heart, right? Because I love you. But we don't just need to consider the person. We need to consider it's the relationship, because if I don't do what is best for you, the relationship is going to fall apart. Am I doing what's right? Here's the third question. Can they rely on my courageous strength? Do I make the hard decisions, even if it means putting myself at risk? Jennifer couldn't rely on, on me in that in the Rays baseball game, right? I wasn't very courageous, but we need to be courageous. Look at what the scripture says, Jeremiah 16, 19. Oh, Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in times of distress. I'm in distress and I need somebody to be courageous for me. Here's another statement. Do you encourage and or help people move forward? There's another verse in the Bible about this in regards to strength. It's kind of an interesting verse that goes along with this. It's in Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 19, the sovereign Lord is my strength. That's what we've been learning about, is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. We need to lead people to have deer feet. I know that sounds really, really weird, but that's what the scripture just said. We need to have, it needs to be like deer in this way. The deer goes to the heights but the deer can go to the depths. It can go down the mountain. We're to be like the deer to lead people up the mountain toward accomplishing something in front of you that's better instead of leading people to look behind you at all the problems and the bad things that you've done in your life and continue to bring them up. Let me just tell you something. If you continuously bring up people's mistakes they're never going to trust you. They're never going to trust you. They're never going to trust you to help them accomplish something better and overcome those things. I'll tell you who you do trust. You trust the people who want you to live. Isn't that what God did? He wants us to experience life. He wants us to be better. And we are the people then to help them overcome those problems in the past and not to focus on them, but to look at what their life would be if they just did what was right. That's who we trust. That's who we trust. Would I want to have a relationship with me? Am I living this out in my life? There is a Third lesson I want to teach you. We lose confidence. Again, in the word trust, this is mentioned. It's reliance on the integrity, strength, ability, and then we see the word confidence of a person or thing. We see a really good example of this in the Bible. It might seem kind of weird that I'm using this scripture, but it's in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. This is what it says. A wife of noble character... Who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full, here's the word, confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm. Listen to this. All the days of her life. What do we learn about God? We can trust him at all times. This is what the wife does. She does good and not harm. All days. 
We need to be wifely. We need to be this kind of person. It, it says in here how it is that we're this confidence kind of person. When people see us this way, two statements. We lose it, confidence. We lose it when we don't do good. That's what she said, or the scripture said. She brings him good. If we don't bring good, we lose it. We gain it when we do good. I know those are simple statements, simple things to say, but that's just truth. When we don't do good, we harm people and we hurt people. If we do anything that's going to cause people to feel worse about themselves and not feel valued and who they are, even if they've done wrong, we are not trustworthy. People can't have confidence in us. But if we do good, we help those around us. I... I don't, I, the stock market has just been terrible. I didn't, I'm not saying this to like just depress you <laughs> big time. I haven't looked at Netflix stock, but I would think that Netflix stock is through the, it probably, maybe it's not, I don't know. But people are watching a lot of Netflix right now because they're stuck in their houses. Jennifer saw one of the Netflix shows and as she saw it promoted, she's like, I think we should watch this. It's called Cheer. I don't know if you've seen that or not. But Cheer is about this cheering squad at Navarro College in Texas. And they are a very famous cheering squad because they've won the national championship like 15 times. I can't remember. But some enormous number of times. Because of that, people are always expecting them to do really great and to win. The series is about them getting ready, going through the, the season, getting ready of, uh, to get ready for this competition that's going to happen in Daytona. Y'all, it's the most fascinating thing. It talks about the people who are involved in it, but to watch these people do what they do, flinging those girls around, it's just crazy. I mean, they're just going all over the place. And the other thing that fascinated me are the guys. The guys are so strong to be able to hold them up and to catch them. If I were one, the girls would die. Okay, there's just no way. I just no way I could do that. To get ready and to pump themselves up after their practices, they had a little chant. And that little chant, I think, is really good. It's a little cheer that, that we can do. This is what it's cheer. I can, I will, I must. I can do it. I will do it. I must do it. Let's apply that to relationships. I can do what's necessary to overcome things in my life to bring peace. I will do what it is. I must do it if there's any hope to give peace a chance. I will. I will. Right? I will do it. So what's the cheer? I can. I will. I must. I can. I can. I will. I will. I must. I must. That'll be our cheer. I can. I will. I must. So will you. We're going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes right now as we look at who we are. Look at how we honestly would answer the question, would I want to have a relationship with me? It may be by the questions that we've gone through. God, they're so important. In answering them, you notice some challenges that you have that you need to overcome. This is what I want to ask you to do. Just a second, I'm going to pray. And as I pray, I want to ask you to pray about that. Listen, you can overcome it, but will you? If you want peace, you must. As I pray, I want to ask you to pray. Father, I thank you so much for what you've taught us through this message. It's so it's powerful, God, because it comes from your word. But God, we need people to be strength for us. We need to trust in those around us. I thank you that we have you in all things. God, you do what's right. And I pray that we would be people who find those things where we are not succeeding and to overcome them, God, in order for people to trust us. God, I pray that we would take and do our part in our relationships to make sure, God, that we can give peace a chance. I thank you, God, that you love us even in our failure. I thank you that you love us unconditionally and you want us to live. I thank you, God, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us 
to live in this way, to protect us, to be trustworthy. God, I, I pray that you would just touch our hearts today and help us to see that we can have the greatest relationship in the world with you. Lead us, God, to be people who confess what we've done wrong to you, to seek your forgiveness through Christ, and to know you personally. God, you're good, and we thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.